guys, it's Danny. Today we are looking at some wonderful special orchids. Now, yes, I know all orchids are special. I consider them special anyway, but there are a few which I know have a bit more of that woe wow factor. There is just something about them that makes them unique, even in the orchid world. And honestly, there are a lot of them which I find quite special. I don't have them all and we really don't have all the time in the world to list all of them. So today I'm gonna list just a few that either I have in bloom right now or I just think are absolutely worth having. If you have a limited space and you're about to choose which orchid should you have from the vast sea of orchids, maybe this video will help you out. But just so you know, there are others and you are always welcome to leave me your suggestions in the comments section and tell me and us who are reading the comments what orchids you think should make this list and why. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it. We have a crow spectator today on the terrace. And hey, why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week. The birds will make an appearance for sure. Yeah, like, subscribe for more. But if you're feeling extra and you wish to further support the channel and you have the ability to consider either becoming a member and getting access to some behind the scenes or exclusive videos, consider using the affiliate links down below in the description. By the way, something new, YouTube just made affiliate YouTube something available to me, which means I can actually tag products during the video, not from Amazon or anything, just like general stores. So you can click on them and find out more about those products and where you can find them. I'm trying it out. I'm not sure how it works, but if you see like a shopping like icon at some point appearing in my videos, try it out because it's a new feature and I'm not sure if, if and how it works. Again, where was I? <laughs> also consider checking out the merch. We have wonderful orchid mugs at the moment, or you can also use the super thanks option below my videos. Right, very long intro, but I guess we're all used to it by now. Let's start with the orchids, shall we? This is not one of the special orchids, although I think she's special. I cannot wait to present it to you guys. I will definitely make a spotlight because this is wonderful, but oh, it's not the topic of today. Just stay tuned for more info about this one. What shall we start? Shall we start with something like super dramatic? Yes, hold on. Alrighty, we're going dramatic. First off, we all love Phalaenopsis orchids, we all know and probably started with Phalaenopsis orchids. Well, there are some fowls which are indeed special and I'm gonna show you a few of them today. Let's just start off with the Phalaenopsis shilleriana, which doesn't even fit in the frame. But there she is, the magical, wonderful Shilleriana. Some of you might know it because I kind of always show it off every year, but it has to be shown off. I'm sorry. Every year is better and better, so I need to show it off. <laughs> Expect more of it in the future, hopefully. But yeah, Phalaenopsis Shilleriana is a species. It's not a man-made hybrid. I'm losing my voice. I'm sorry. have been talking quite a lot. Yeah, so you will not actually find this Phalaenopsis in the flower shops, but it is not a rare orchid or anything. You can find it at orchid nurseries and there are multiple of them throughout the world. Just look for them online. They can even ship. You don't need to go and buy them. This is a very iconic and very popular Phalaenopsis orchid because not only does it look like this, naturally. <laughs> you don't have to do anything to it other than good care, but it also has the most spectacular mottling on its foliage, making it quite a beautiful centerpiece even if it's not in bloom. But when it's in bloom, you guys, you want another bonus? Is this not enough? It's not enough. It's also fragrant. Yes. It doesn't have Oh, it's beautiful. It doesn't have an overpowering scent. It is a very flowery scent. Some people say it's a little bit rosy. I think it smells a little like violets. And when I say violets, I don't mean African violets. There is a violet that I remember from my childhood, grew in the country I was born in, um, that smells exactly like this. I'll try to post a picture on the screen. I'm not sure what type of violet that is, or if indeed is a violet. It's, it's a violet in Romania, okay? <laughs> It smells like that to me and definitely it reminds me of childhood. The Phalaenopsis shilleriana is actually used a lot in hybridization and I will show you one of its hybrids in just a little bit. When you first purchase a shilleriana, most likely you will purchase it as a younger orchid, as a tiny, tiny orchid. Don't be put down because it's gonna grow and it will bloom even at that smaller size. It will just not create 
a lot of blooms. It blooms much better when it's mature, obviously, but you will pay less for a tinier orchid. And the whole joy of growing orchids is to watch them evolve and to watch them grow anyway. So typically at nurseries, you'll find baby chilarianas. That's fine. This one was a baby as well. This is actually a cake I saved from a mother plant. Um, and in a few years, it became like this. Year after year, it blooms better. This year, it's the first time it has two flower spikes at once. And if you search up this orchid on the internet, you will see very mature individuals with very long leaves looking even better than this. So it's getting better as you grow it. And since orchids can live a very, very, very long time indefinitely, you can imagine how beautiful this one can end up like in 10 years. I cannot wait to see how this one evolves. So yeah, if you guys didn't know the Shilariana, now you do. I think it's one of the most special orchids, although it, it, it's grammatically incorrect to say that, right? Let's just do it fun for the funsies, just to make a point of how beautiful this orchid is. If you want a special Phalaenopsis, I don't know if you can get any more special <laughs> than this. Look at this, it's creating an arch. Oh, it's so beautiful. This will be the thumbnail. I wish I had a black background because the flowers kind of get lost in the background, but I hope you can get an idea how beautiful this orchid is. And it's, it's I am engulfed in fragrance right now. It's absolutely magical. Definitely the Shilariana is a must. If you don't have space and you want a very special Phalaenopsis, this is the one for you. Now, let's say you don't want to go through the trouble of getting something from an orchid nursery. You want to stick to whatever's at the flower shop. Yet another thumbnail worthy orchid. Take a look at this girl. This is a flower shop Phalaenopsis orchid. You might not see it maybe from a distance, but I will give you close ups. This Phalaenopsis orchid is different than the typical simple white Phalaenopsis. Take a look at the lip. Do you notice something? Yeah, it's a lot broader and bigger and it doesn't have that yellow in the center like typical white Phalaenopsis. Well, this is a big lip Phalaenopsis orchid and there are multiple of them, not only white. You can have purple ones, pink ones. There are quite a few hybrids that hit the market just a few years ago and they're becoming more and more popular. I certainly see them a lot in flower shops. They're just, you know, not necessarily what I'm into so much because they are very big orchids. Uh, but I do see a lot of hybrids with big lips and I think the big lip trait is at least now when I'm recording this quite a special feature because the vast majority of Phalaenopsis orchids don't have big lips. Well, some do and I find them so 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 elegant. Not that they weren't elegant with their natural lips, but I just find this particular hybrid quite an elegant hybrid let's say i see these guys being used for weddings a lot the, the white one in particular and it can produce a multitude of flowers just like any other pretty much oh no flower shop phalaenopsis i have to be very careful with this one because the flowers are very very heavy and i have them in this sort of very finicky balance and I'm hoping I'm not going to break the flower spikes. This I think is the first time it reblooms. I think I got it last year, this particular one. It's a little bit bigger than I expected to be honest. The flower spikes are a little bit longer than I expected but I will know next year to stake it better. Anyway, this is your typical flower shop Phalaenopsis. It takes the same care as any other Phalaenopsis you buy at the flower shop, it just has a big lip. Now, how do I get these orchids to bloom with so many flowers? We'll discuss that at the end because I have like a wild card orchid in the list. But you can have a wonderful, wonderful display with a flower shop Phalaenopsis as well. And I think one of the most special hybrids at the flower shop are the big lips ones. Whether they're white or other colors, I think they're just adorable. I think they did a great job obtaining this hybrid. It is something unique in my opinion. And definitely if you're looking for something like this, check out your garden centers and flower shops and you might find a big lip Phalaenopsis. Right, so let's stick to flower shop Phalaenopsis. I promise I have other types of orchids as well, but I kind of wanted to go through the Phalaenopsis ones because everybody loves fowls. This is a variegated Phalaenopsis. This is Sogo Vivian variety variegated. 
something like that. This, again, you can actually find in flower shops, not as common, I would say, as the Big Lip Fowls. I think, depending on where you live, I did not see this in my area, but I know many of you, especially those of you who live in the US, you find this at flower shops as well. Well, if you don't find it at the flower shop, definitely orchid nurseries. What this is, is a typical mini Phalaenopsis, which is variegated. And since we can actually marry clone or clone these orchids, we can obtain other individuals that look just like it even though this trait is quite rare. Having variegation on plants is not very common because this is going a little against their evolutionary traits. They do photosynthesize less and these orchids in my opinion do grow slower than other orchids but it makes for quite a unique orchid I would say. The flowers are not variegated, it's not in bloom right now although it's full of buds but I do have some footage from previous years that I will insert here. It has wonderful pink flowers. The flowers are maybe in my opinion nothing to write home about but take the overall look of this orchid, the variegated foliage plus the flowers. I think they are fantastic. It is not fragrant. The white phalaenopsis I showed you earlier, it's not fragrant either, I forgot to mention. But if you want a tinier version of the wonderful phalaenopsis that I guess are the staple orchid you think about when you think about orchids, then you can have a miniature phalaenopsis. And I do believe the variegated ones are absolutely unique. I do believe there is another variety that you can find in some flower shops in some parts of the world but I have the Sogo Vivian that I can show you today and I know this one is quite a popular one. So keep an eye out for this one if you like variegated plants and you don't have as much space to display a big Phalaenopsis orchid. Bonus, it doesn't grow as fast. Honestly, I'll show you at the end of the video how a miniature Phalaenopsis that I had for a few years looks like. It's definitely bigger than this one. So maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you don't want it to grow very fast. Maybe it cannot actually grow to the size of the other miniature Phalaenopsis, but it can definitely be healthy. It can definitely bloom and it looks absolutely gorgeous even if it's not in bloom. So put this one on your wish list if you enjoy variegated plants. Next up, let's switch it up color changing cattleya orchids. Typically cattleyas are the color changer. Some other orchids can change color throughout the bloom's life, but I find that some of these not phalaenopsis, cattleya hybrids are very dramatic. So what I'm showing you here is the Brasso Cattleya Yellowbird. It is a hybrid. And it's a very common and very popular hybrid, which starts off as a pink flower but within a few days it goes to a wonderful yellow flower. Bonus, this orchid is fragrant in the nighttime as well and it smells just like a night flower. How you would expect a night flower to smell like? This is how it smells like. I do think it's trying to attract the same type of moths or pollinators as other night flowering plants so expect that nice sunscreen type of a scent. With these orchids, which I'm gonna show on the screen a few other hybrids, you have pretty much two orchids in one. I do have an orchid which is even more dramatic than this, it's just not in bloom right now. It opens fully purple and then it goes into a wonderful yellow color. So you have a purple orchid and a yellow orchid within a span of a week. How wonderful is that? It's a little bit of a cheat, I would say. And it's always amazing to see these flower change. You can have like the oldest flowers starting to change already, becoming more yellow as the top flowers are still purpley pink. It's absolutely fantastic and I do see that these Brassavola hybrids, they all kind of go through the same color changers. I mean, you're not gonna have an orchid that blooms white and then it goes to, I don't know, red or something like that. They kind of stick to the purple and yellow because they are hybrids and they have or they share some parents, the Brassavola parents, but I do absolutely love these orchids. As I was saying, it feels like a little bit of a cheat, like I have two orchids in one. Bonus, these are very easy to care for. They don't require a whole lot of light like some other types of cattleyas do. I always recommend these for beginners because they are forgiving. They're very easy to take care of. You'll have a cattleya tutorial down below. Bonus, they grow very fast. They produce multiple pseudobulbs per year and whenever a pseudobulb matures, it can create blooms. It can also split, the rhizome can also split and you can have multiple directions of growth and they're just very 
very vigorous orchids. This one needs repotting. So Brassavola hybrids, the ones that have these beautiful star shapes, they can also color change. They will not all do that. But yeah, just so you know, these Brassavola hybrids, not only do they smell great and look fantastic and are easy to care for and they grow fast, but they also change their color. How beautiful is that? All right, this next orchid is taking up old frame and I don't mind at all. And I don't think you mind either. So. We've talked about fragrant orchids that smell like flowers, but what about orchids that smell like foods? Do they exist? Yes, they do. And in this section, I have two to show you. First off, the Maxillaria tenofolia, the famous coconut orchid, which smells like coconuts. There is a little bit of a disclaimer here. I did not grow up with coconuts. Uh, we did not have coconuts when I grew up in my country. <laughs> there was a ban on foods. Uh, not gonna go into that. But <laughs> this one apparently smells like fresh coconuts. So not those dried flakes that you put in cookies. It does not smell like that to me. It smells like fresh coconuts and everybody agrees. I personally smell peaches. Maybe some pineapple, I don't know. But definitely a fruit, very mouth-watering fruit. I would say peaches, okay? Because in my brain, the smell of coconut flakes is very, very strong. And if it doesn't smell like coconut flakes, it doesn't smell like coconuts for me. That's a little something you should know. Most people detect coconuts. I detect peaches. In any case, it's a fruit. It's something you would want to eat. Do not eat it. <laughs> but yeah, it smells absolutely fantastic. Plus the orchid looks very, very wild. It looks like a grass. It is actually pretty easy to take care of. It kind of takes the same care of cattleyas. The only difference is it just does not like to dry out quite at all. And it's quite thirsty. I actually have mine potted in pure sphagnum moss like most orchids. But even if you don't keep your cattleyas in a very watery attentive medium, this one should be because she will not like if she gets dehydrated. Also, you need to provide pretty bright light and warmth. Other than that, it's really not that difficult to grow. You can definitely find it at orchid nurseries. I'm not entirely sure about garden centers or flower shops, depends where you live, but this is one of those more of a collector's items. And again, I wanna stress this, it's not rare. Just because it smells like this, doesn't mean you have to pay a lot of money for it. It's actually one of the most common and popular orchids in the hobby, particularly if you live in more of a subtropical or tropical area. This one should be very, very easy to acquire. It is a species, but it's just so, so, so easy to propagate. All you need to do is remove a few of these pseudobulbs and that is it. These are not taken from the wild, they are propagated in the hobby. Whether they're cloned or just propagated through division, I honestly think this one was divided because I don't see tiny pseudobulbs. It arrived like a mature division, which I do believe it's the most common way of propagating this orchid. Just cut away some of these uh, pseudobulbs, keep three pseudobulbs per division, and you're pretty good. It blooms once a year though, in springtime. It doesn't have to bloom in March, depends where you are. If you're in Australia, it will bloom, I think, in September. September, October, right? Springtime. Whenever you have spring, theoretically, it should start to bloom and it does smell beautiful. It has a very fresh fragrance. It's not incredibly strong, but it's not mild either. I mean, I'm definitely detecting it while I stand here. I don't detect it in the room. If I go close to it, yes, it's in the air, but it doesn't really fill up an entire room. So if you have some scent sensitivity, I'm not sure if this one will cause you problems. It's not a sweet scent in my opinion. That's why I don't associate it with uh, coconuts. So I don't think it's gonna give you a headache, but Definitely, if you like fresh and kind of soury scents, I do recommend this one. But if you're into sweet scents, I have another one for you. How would you react if I told you we have an orchid in the hobby that smells like chocolate? Milk chocolate slash vanilla? I would say milk chocolate. Yes, we do. We have two orchids or even more. First off, the very iconic Oncidium Sherry Baby. And second, with the same scent, a close relative of the Sherry Baby is the Oncidium Heaven Scent Redolence. I personally prefer the Redolence because it's a little more compact. The flowers stay more compact and they look a little bit better. They have 
a better color scheme. They have a beautiful white on them as well. So any of these orchids you would acquire, they both smell the same. And the consensus is that they do kind of smell like milk chocolate. Some people will describe them as vanilla-ish as well. So it depends on how you will detect them. It's going to be a surprise, but definitely they smell very yummy and very, very sweet. Now that scent could give you a bit of a headache because it's very strong. Like if I would have a sherry baby in this room in bloom right now, all the room would be smelling like I just baked a bunch of cookies, chocolate chip cookies. That's how it would smell, I kid you not. But it's absolutely wonderful. Again, not a rare orchid in any case. It's a hybrid and it's a very iconic and popular orchid. You should find it in orchid flower, not flower shops, nurseries. Although sometimes it appears in flower shops as well, very rarely, but it appears in flower shops as well since it's so popular and everybody likes it. So these are the two orchids that in my opinion are absolutely magical because they smell like food. But of course, if you have some other orchids which smell like any type of food you like, please include them in the comments and I'll put them on my wish list because I adore fragrant orchids and if they smell good, like not bacon necessarily, I, I don't know if I would like an orchid to smell like bacon because I don't think bacon smells good. <laughs> Uh, but if they smell like something I would eat, I would love to have that orchid. Not eat it, just have it and smell it when it's in bloom. Right, so let's move on to a different orchid that has nothing to do with fragrance but has everything to do with visuals. It's what I like to call the orchids that have a major woe well factor. I lied, it does have to do with scent as well. But one of the very first orchids that I would say wowed me like instantly is the beautiful Francis Fox, Mirme Catavola Francis Fox. Now, if you look at this, are you gonna say, oh, it's nice, but is it fragrant? No, you're gonna be like, whoa, what is that? And then you're gonna be like, oh, it's also fragrant. Oh my gosh, this is a Cattleya type orchid. It's quite large. It has very tall flower spikes and quite big flowers, but it is absolutely fantastic. This is an orchid that I will forever and always have, no matter how much space it takes in my life, because it's absolutely fantastic. This year I have two flower spikes from it. Very nice. And it's also fragrant, but it's fragrant in the nighttime. It smells like a night flower because it's a Brassavola hybrid. And it also changes colors a little bit. The newest flowers are always a little bit more purple than the oldest flowers, which are more rusty orange but the colors are so vivid and the pattern is just so incredibly beautiful that, you know, there are no words for this orchid. It is just wow. Now there are many orchids with this wow factor. When you see them, you're like forever in love with them. Um, and I'm just gonna show you two of them. First, the Francis Fox, because I do believe it's the first orchid that absolutely floored me. Like when I saw it, like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And it's still to this day, very, very, very high up there even maybe on number one spot of how beautiful it can be. It is a hybrid though, it's not natural. <laughs> but again, it's one of those very good hybrids in my opinion. Bonus the fragrance, you know, if you like that wonderful nighttime flower fragrance, this one is for you. It's also pretty strong as well. These nighttime fragrant orchids can be pretty strong. It's just very unruly. It's a big orchid, it's a tall flower spike you need quite a lot of space for it, but it's easy to care for. Only blooms once a year though. It takes typical cat layout care and you have the tutorial down below. It likes warmth and it likes bright light. But other than that, it's very, very drought tolerant and I think you should do absolutely fine with it if you do good with cat layers. And speaking about cat layers with the woe factor, let me just present another one of my favorites, the Fushu Glory Happy Holiday, which has the most beautiful pinwheel pattern on its flowers. Bonuts is also a little bit fragrant, not very, just a little bit, a little flowery scent during daytime, but the woe factor with that, it's the flowers. It has even bigger flowers than the Francis Fox, and as it ages, it color changes a little bit. When the flowers first open, they do not have that pinwheel pattern to them. You have to let the flower age a little bit, lose a little bit of the color, and then that pinwheel, those stripes will become more and more visible. It is absolutely fantastic. When you see it, you're floored. Like when you see it in, in front of you in reality. I'm hoping cameras do it justice, but sometimes the cameras don't. But when you see it in reality with those 
big, big flowers that look like a windmill. It's never gonna get old. That orchid will never get old. And again, it's a hybrid. <laughs> and you can find it at Orchid Nurseries. It's pretty popular I see in the past few years. I'm not entirely sure how old the hybrid is. It might not be a very old hybrid, but it became very popular in uh, the past few years. So I'm sure that if you put it on the wish list, you will see it at some point in Orchid Nurseries. So these are the two orchids that I will include in this category, but rest assured there are others. But these are the ones that are very vivid in my mind, let's say. So again, if you have others to suggest, put them down below. But yeah, aren't they just amazing? I cannot believe it. What beautiful hybrids. Good job, hybridizers. Right, so I showed you kinda tall and big and flashy orchids up until now, but they don't have to be that way to be special and absolutely beautiful. Introducing the mini cat layout orchids, which I have a special place in my heart for because they do not take up a lot of space. They're easy to grow, especially if you have a warmer environment and they're absolutely fantastic. Take a look at this little beauty. This one is Catlea Tangerine Fire Mini Sun and it has the most beautiful, slightly translucent peachy flowers. I have never seen an orchid with this coloration. I'll give you close-ups, don't worry. It's absolutely magical. It's not really fragrant. These mini cats, typically they have a parent in common, which is not very fragrant. That gives them the tiny stature. Some of them are fragrant, most of them are not fragrant. But take a look at the wonderful display of tiny blooms. It's like a wonderful big flashy orchid, but in miniature size. And I think it's absolutely suitable for home growing, small windowsills, small places. You can have 10 of these in the place where you would put a typical normal big phalaenopsis orchid from the flower shop. So if you're into these tiny little jewels and beautiful mini cats, I actually do have a video about mini cats where I present a few more. I'll link it to it down below. As more of them bloom, I will present more in other videos uh, because as I was saying, I do have a special place in my heart and because of space constraints, uh, I do want mini cats in my collection. I am focusing on them. And plus I do absolutely enjoy their wonderful colors and their wonderful shapes. So do think about the mini orchids as well. Don't forget about them. There are so many which are absolutely fantastical that really you don't need to go with very, very big orchids to have something special. And some nurseries actually have a special section with mini orchids. It's not only mini cat layers, as you will see, I'll show you a mini fowl. It's not only mini cat layers, but there are other miniature orchids as well. Just read up on them, see if your environment can be suitable for them. I, as many of you know, live in more of a warm climate. It's subtropical. I have a lot of sun throughout the year and it's mostly warm. Two months a year, it's a little chilly, but not very cold. Other than that, it's really warm. So cat layers and warm growing orchids typically do absolutely fantastic for me. And cold growing orchids, not so well. Not well at all. So do try to read up on the orchids a little bit. Many of them are in the middle. Many of them can do well in home environments. That's why people sell them because the vast majority of them will do well in home conditions. And there are just a few that typically need more of a terrarium type of an enclosure or environment, most of them. And the ones that I showed you in today's video definitely can do well in home conditions. So do not look away from miniature orchids because they are absolutely fantastic as well. And speaking about mini orchids, let me show you the wild card of today's video. And there we have her. Isn't she adorable? What is this? This is a typical flower shop mini phalaenopsis. It's not mini. Yes, it is. It's just a little bit older. Because one thing you should know about orchids, no matter what orchid and if we consider it special or not, one thing you should know is that with age and good care, you will go from pretty to astonishing. This is your typical modest, eight euros in my area, miniature phalaenopsis from the flower shop. It's actually the J.O.'s pink girl and it is a Schilleriana hybrid. Very easy to find. It's one of the most popular mini orchids in the flower shops I see. This one, when I purchased it, it had even less flowers than it has on this spike. It had, I don't know, eight, ten flowers and it was tiny. 
Well, that's why it did not have a lot of flowers because it was still young, it was still tiny. And I've had this one for multiple years and this is how they can become quite the difference, right? And they can still get a little bit better than this. And in a little bit of time, pretty much all of my mini Phalaenopsis will be in bloom. Some of you know, year after year, I will come back with a video showing you the most amazing orchids you've ever seen. They're all pretty affordable miniature Phalaenopsis from the flower shop. Some of them don't even have names, nobody bothers to name them, but I absolutely enjoy them. I have quite an entire collection of flower shop mini fells that I take care of and I am patient and I treat well and I'm rewarded year after year with some of the most astonishing displays. You can get this with any orchid from the flower shop. Any orchid can become astonishing and special and just absolutely wonderful if you take care of it and if you have a little bit of patience to let it completely mature. So I think you can see why this is the wild card because this represents any orchid which you might think oh, it's just an orchid when you see it in the shop but then you invest time and love and energy into it and knowledge and you get something 10 times better because that's what orchids do that's what they're best at just give them a shot and give them your love and attention right let's end this topic because i can blab thank you so much for hanging out with me today and i hope you have a great day i'll see you next time bye